Welcome to the Theatre Café webinar series. Uh, we're talking about how to write and how to create theatre for young audiences. Uh, and I've invited you here because you are an actress uh, and a playwright. Um, and w you've specialised in, or you've, you're kind of, uh, you're writing a lot at the moment that's rapid response. So you're dealing with themes that come straight out of the news. Uh, could you tell us about that form of writing and how you think about that in relation to uh, performing for a young audience? Well, I write um, in a rapid response uh, for a format mainly because I'm uh, too lazy and unstructured to, to spend a year on a text. That's my, when I grow up, I'd like to really focus on a classic text that um, that took me a long time to write. I find the rapid response format, because there's a limit of time, means that I don't get bogged down and hung up on um, the, the fine tuning, which I've been taught in a tr traditional uh, British theatre background, but also here in Norway, is very important. Um, I'm still exploring that, whether it is important to fine tune, go back, polish, and the whole concept of rewriting. If I'm going to be honest, which I think is actually the best policy, mm. uh, especially when one's committed to celluloid, if you will, I enjoy writing for uh, young people because I feel that I can get away with more. Um, I can get away with simpler dramaturgies. Um, simpler characters, if you will, and um, <clears throat> more bold and bold expressions. This is not to say that I write differently for adults. It's just that I feel um, more free than I write for, for, for younger people um, because I don't feel that there's this unspoken sen censor either in my head or out there. I, I'm not sure that I've written rapid response for youth. I've written about contemporary themes. Hmm. Well, I mean, we worked together on a project recently uh, which was called Soft Eyes, and, and which was a rapid response piece. Hmm. Now, originally it wasn't written specifically with the young audience in mind. It was dealing with the refugee crisis. Hmm. But uh, it was performed at the Speaker Books Festival, and I, I've just interviewed mm. Cece from the Speaker Books Festival, uh, a room full of young people, mm. uh, young adults at least. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, and there is currently, we will see whether that you know, happens, but there's currently interest in performing that mm. for young uh, audiences, for teenagers. Uh, so have you, have you, you know, thought about the, the, the meeting between this piece and these uh, youngsters? It's a tough subject. Um, the piece was written to yeah. be played at um, an international acting festival, so it was for people within the business. It mm -hmm. was for industry folk. It was definitely preaching to the choir. I wrote the piece for people who I figured could handle um, this very chorus-based, uh, Germanic, uh, hard, abstract text. The fact that it worked at a hip hop festival has blown my mind. I mean, it's 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 the ultimate to be to be taken in from the cold by the coolest people on the planet. Which is in in that instance, the feedback that we had afterwards was also from um, hip hop spoken word professionals, especially those from New York, particularly those who are in their forties and fifties. These people are uh, are well, I don't know what the kids say, the shit, I suppose, mm. or the bomb, <laughs> or whatever they are. Um, and to, to see that we were talking the same language, just accidentally, I, I never tried to be part of the hip hop scene. I mean, look at me, it's just ridiculous. You know, I'm a very uh, uncool person. So to find that by sheer intuition, that one wrote something that made sense for oneself, um, and in, in the soft eyes uh, incident, <laughs> incident, where we had 24 hours, mm from when we were given a news headline to when we were going to perform the 12-minute piece, 
and I think that the, after doing some having a conversation with yourself and the actors, I, I wrote the piece in one hour. Um, I had to write in a language which was comfortable for me, and to find that accidentally that language r reached uh, r really reached a, a, an audience who were who were into the words, mm -hmm. but um, not into uh, standard uh, acting forms, was very illuminating and very touching mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and very inspiring. Um, I don't know what the solution is. I'll maintain to my dying day that you shouldn't write for kids and you shouldn't write for teenagers. You should write. And uh, I, I'm quite confused about the whole conversation about writing for okay, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, that's something else. But I think when we're talking about teens particularly or youth, I'm, I'm not sure if it's not already too, too late. It's something very different when you're talking about writing for young actors. That's slightly different, and I think that's also part of the, the, the whole conversation. But writing for younger audiences always confuses me and frightens me, partly because I find it quite terrifying that young audiences experience theatre as a group. In my very old-fashioned and hardcore way, I believe that the best experience of theatre is if you experience it in the in the truest traditional sense of the word that you go to the theatre and that you are sitting amongst strangers who may range in age from 20 to 60 or from 14 to 70 and experience this gives you a different experience if you're sitting with your entire class I never went to the theatre with my school and if I did we went to the National Theatre where we were amongst a thousand other normal theatre goers who paid good money to be there. So you learned some kind of respect for the ritual space. So I have a really big problem with kids experiencing theatre in their schools when we go to them and they can sit there protected by the pow pack mentality. When I write for schools, I find it terrifying. The last time I wrote for a play which was to be produced by a professional company and taken into schools. We wrote it specifically with a scenography which, requi which required the audience to be uh, disarmed. Complete darkness, they were in forced to take off their shoes and hand in their mobile phones. So I had to um, take their weapons away from them, which was their sight, their uh, safety zone, I needed to find a way to channel their attention so that they were no longer a pack, but were rather individuals. And then I could continue to write in the very abstract and dark poetic way that I, that I prefer. Um, to write for audiences, young audiences, where there may be 200 of them sitting in a, a gymnasium, is, um, it's just terrifying. Do you think it is, uh, it is the writer's responsibility and it's also uh, the writer's possibility to, to demand through the text that they're writing a certain way of yeah. performing which absolutely. will break through that barrier? Uh, absolutely. I, I, mean, I think it's 101. The form informs the content. Mm. Yeah. It, maybe that's the start point of our conversation. When you write for youth, for young audiences, again, I will make the distinction mm. between writing for young actors and young Yes, and we'll audiences. get to talking about young actors yeah, a bit later. But when one's writing with young audiences in mind, um, the fact that you are writing for that audience, um, that the, the style in which you write is everything. If, you, if the content is irrelevant, actually, um, and if you haven't got the style, the form in mind as a writer, I feel. I, I feel that if you sit in your ivory tower writing a beautiful and important story which is supposed to reach kids but you haven't um, understood what happens when the door opens and they go in to meet your work, you are um, you're buggered basically. And I've seen that. I've seen theatre for young audiences fail so many times.